Hi, it's The Wire. It's January 20th, 2024. You're a gambler. Uh, we all do research. I'm just going to share a little snippet of what I researched this morning. There is a great article. It's really good. In the Washington Post. It's up on their website. I would encourage you to read it. It's on Lamar Jackson. And um, in the article, they point out that T. Martin, who uh, was big time when he was the quarterback at Tennessee, is now Lamar Jackson's quarterback coach. And he points out that he considers Jackson to be a savant. Apparently, Jackson has a near photographic memory where he can remember plays weather conditions, the positions of different guys on the field. So they actually talked to his head coach, John Harbaugh, who's not given to exaggeration. And Harbaugh talks about how he talks with Jackson. Jackson will mention things that happened on the field. And then Harbaugh will go look at the film tape and will see the things that Jackson's talking about. So they give an example of uh, Jackson's input. This season, Jackson has much more input in the offense than he's had in the past. And apparently they had a play set up where they were going to go to Zay Flowers in a game deep. And Jackson came up with the idea of when he fades back, fading back left-handed. It would throw the defense off. They wouldn't know what he was doing. They would think he was running. Then he would flip to his orthodox stance and throw deep. Needless to say, the play worked, right? I believe much of sports, particularly the quarterback position, is mental. And let's just say I have a keen eye on that Lamar Jackson, C.J. Stroud matchup. I already know who Stroud is. Folks, that's a great quarterback, right? Don't go by the fact that he's a rookie and all this other stuff. Don't go by the fact that in his first start, as an NFLer, he faced and lost to these Ravens, right? I already know he's special, right? Understand, um, in the 1980s, I watched a quarterback throw to open guys. They were wide open, it seemed. Right? That quarterback was Joe Montana. Jerry Rice was not his only weapon. Right, It seemed like Montana was playing catch with open receivers. No, that's a read, recognition, a very fast mental thought process. Right, You have that with Stroud. I already know who Stroud is. Folks, Stroud this season, by the way, his rookie year, threw five picks. Right Before Stroud, I thought the best rookie quarterback I saw was Dan Marino. Folks, Stroud is much better at this stage of his career than Dan Marino was as a first-year player. And Marino used to be the standard. Right. Well, the question on Lamar is a big one because Lamar has only won one playoff game in his career. Right. Baltimore, in fact, was the one seed five years ago. And they lost their first game in the playoffs, right? I remember it vividly because I was in the sports book at Luxor in Las Vegas, right? Just understand, Lamar Jackson now, forget the physical gifts, right? Lamar Jackson now has a mental side that he's now able to show. T. Martin, who won a national championship in college, right, is astounded. Right? Apparently, teammates have known this for some time. For me, that's the game of the weekend. Let's see how it turns out. Jackson against Stroud in Baltimore. Let's also flip the page here and let's talk about something most people don't realize. Another young player, very young player, different sport, basketball. By the way, behind me are the numbers from the season where Wilt averaged 50 points a game, right? 1962 NBA 
These are the guys who were in contention to win the MVP that year. Look at the numbers. Realize that from the center position, lefty Bill Russell averaged 4.5 assists a game. Right, Recognize that Oscar Robertson averaged a triple-double for the season. Right, Recognize that Elgin Baylor pulls down 18 boards a game. Averages 38 points a game. And, of course, people have forgotten that season. Right? Elgin didn't win the MVP. He didn't average 50. Um, you know, Wilt didn't win the MVP either. Uh, he didn't average the 50 that Wilt averaged. We forget what a great player Elgin is. Well, speaking of great players, in my opinion, and I know it's controversial, and that's great, because you wait, you make your money in the gap between what the public believes and what the truth is. I believe Chet Hulgren right now, OKC, is one of the best players in the National Basketball Association. Right, folks, this guy is special. Right, OKC is second right now in the Western Conference. Get on board right now. If he sticks with Julius Alexander, another one of the very best players in the league, and if those two guys stay together, folks, you're looking at years of dominance. Right? Years of dominance. Well, something happened in the last few days that you need to know about, and it's very important. Right? Because we've seen great players in sports. Russell Wilson comes to mind. I think he's a great player who are not loved by their teammates, right? I'm a Yankee fan from the 70s. Reggie Jackson was not loved by his teammates. Great player. Mr. October was not loved, right? In basketball, being loved is very important. Being a teammate who people want to play with is very important, right? Now, just understand that Chet Hulgren is from Minnesota. And his high school decided to retire his jersey. So, of course, Hulgren is going to fly to Minnesota. And apparently, several of his teammates, some of them multimillionaires, right? Most of them with no ties to Minnesota. Keep in mind, folks, these guys play for the OKC Thunder. Oklahoma is not close to Minnesota. They actually went to Chet's high school event. So there is Hulgren in his high school gym getting his number retired. And the team thought enough of him where guys on their own dime travel to the event. Right, folks? That's all you need to know about Chet Hulgren. I'm just telling you he's a spectacular player. Apparently, his teammates think he's a spectacular guy. The talent is there. Right? They have a shot this season to win the Western Conference. Just understand, the defending champion right now, of course, are the Denver Nuggets. Let's just say OKC lost the other day to the Lakers, the team that played the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals last year. And I was surprised that OKC lost that game. Right? This is a young team. They're cohesive. They're together enough to attend high school number ceremonies. Right? They're superstar. And Hulgren is a low-key guy. Their superstar is loved by the team. Right? I'm just telling you that team has legs. Right? Team culture, team support matters. You're still getting great odds on the Thunder. At a minimum, you want to take them to win it all with the idea that you could hedge later if you need to. Right? But don't overlook them. Sometimes we fall in love with big cities. Forget about 
actual basketball, how it's being played, and overlook these small markets. Don't make that mistake with this team. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I also like the Minnesota Timberwolves. Just food for thought, right? Let's just say this season, at least in the West, there seems to be a changing of the guard. Pay close attention. And I say that a day after Denver, of course, showed up and beat Boston, the king of the East. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Just sharing notes. I hope you leave some of yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.